What's up guys, welcome to the quarantine. I'm your host Wolf, and today I'm going to be taking a look at a game called Memoir 44. Now Memoir 44 is a two player game that takes about 30 to 60 minutes according to the box, which I say is about accurate. Uh, and it is a World War II game that uses what's called the commanding color system. Now, I will briefly explain what that is once we get to the overview, uh, but it's a pretty cool little system. Um, now, with Memoir 44, you're basically going to be able to reenact any or most battles that took place during World War II between the Axis and the Allies. I'm not a big history buff, I know enough, uh, but I was super excited to see how this game plays. Uh, before I dive into the overview, I feel inclined to, as usual, say that this is a review. It is not a tutorial, so I may forget a few rules or whatever. This should, but it's mainly just to give you a good idea of the game and whether or not it's something for you. So let's just go right into the review. All right. Uh, the setup for Memoir 44 is a bit unique, so I've just set up some basic stuff out on the table, so I'll be able to show you how the game plays. When you set up Memoir 44, you're going to look through the rule book and at the back of the rule book you're going to have different campaigns so you're going to pick one that you want to play and then you're going to set it up accordingly so you're going to set up the terrain you're going to set up the units where the game tells you to for each side the axes and the allies you get uh, of course the name the year that the battle took the or not the year but the date in general when it took place how many of what piece you're going to need um, the historical background of this battle uh, any briefing, which is uh, generally how many command cards the players uh, the players have, um, any special other things, uh, and then you have your victory conditions. Generally, it's medals or just wipe tabling the opponent. Um, so you know, British Major John Howard takes six command cards, and you move first. But let's say we just chose one of these. But so, yeah, this is how you're gonna set it up. I have a very basic kind of things thrown out here just so I can show an idea how the game plays. So let's yeah, put this like that. So the way the game is going to work is you're going to have a hand of these cards. Now these cards, if you look at the board, you see these little red lines here. And these lines break up uh, from our perspective, left flank, right, or sorry, left flank, middle flank, right flank. So when you look at these cards, it's going to say uh, issue or order up to three units on the right flank. So, three units on that side of the board. Or all units on the left flank. Or one unit in each flank. Or sometimes you get these gray cards, which are just special cards. So, the way you're going to do is we usually will take these little markers here just to allow you to. These are the metals that you use to keep track of your points down at the bottom. But we usually also use these to show who activates. So let's say hypothetically the everything you see here is on the right flank. So I'm gonna go, okay, I play this card. And it allows me to activate three units on the right flank. Or order three units. So you're gonna take this, and you'll go ahead and discard it, and you'll put a marker next to each unit. So I'll go, this is gonna activate, this is gonna activate, and this is gonna activate. Uh, now, one cool thing with this game is it has a bunch of cards here that have all the terrain. What all the terrain does, any modifiers. Uh, so, for example, uh, hills. So we've got a hill right in front of us. It says here, uh, blocks line of sight, uh, except it went from adjacent hills at the same height, uh, which I'm not going to touch on that. It's basically, if you have a grouping of hills that are all adjacent, they're all considered the same height, but if you have two separate hills that aren't actually attached, they're different height, it's, it's confusing, but um, no movement restrictions. Uh, terrain protection applies only against units battling from below, minus uh, one for infantry, minus one for tanks. So basically, if I have ta my tank unit on top of this hill, which I probably will in a minute, uh, and something shoots up at them, they, the things shooting at them get a minus one to the dice pool, which I'll touch on. And then you also have this card here, which shows how infantry, armor, and artillery work, and then how the special units of infantry and uh, tanks work. But, and I'll touch on this part in a second. So what's going to happen is, if we look at infantry, because we're activating these three units, you look at infantry, infantry can move zero to one and then battle. They can move two and have no battle, or they can take ground on a successful close assault. So, 
the way they're going to activate is they will move one right here and now when you activate you act you choose who's going to activate you move everybody then you attack with everybody so we move to the tank the armor unit they get to move zero to three in battle they may overrun unsuccessful close assaults so these will go here I'll move these up on top of the hill they did flips on their way up there apparently so they're going to go on the hill to get the high ground and then the artillery says they can move one or battle and then ignore line of sight and terrain protection so they're not going to get to do anything so let's move up here with them they don't get to do anything but now I'm going to get to shoot with everybody so the infantry these over here show that where the infantry is you get three dice two dice one dice so if I'm going to shoot at this tank division it'll be one two so it's two hexes away, meaning we get two dice. So basically three, two, so on and so forth. The way line of sight works is you do a, from the center of one uh, of your hex to the center of their hex. Uh, if it passes through enemy units or terrain or anything like that, you don't have line of sight. In the situation here, if I wanted these infantry to shoot this infantry, it passes right next to this. And the way this would work is I'm not blocking line of sight here. However, if my, if the tank division was actually here, because both sides of this is uh, occupied by something that would block line of sight, I wouldn't have line of sight here. But as it stands now, I have line of sight to those infantry. So, I should probably have gotten these dice out a second ago. So what's going to happen is you're going to roll these dice. And because I it's two hexes away, I only get two dice. And the dice have different faces. You have an infantry hit, a universal hit, another infantry hit, a tank hit. Generally, this is a miss, but some cards uh, will use it. And then you have a retreat. So in this case, I will take this and roll it. I got one infantry hit. I'm shooting at infantry, so they would lose one piece. So the four people is really just a show how much health the unit has that's that's really it but they got their shoot so this comes off and now we move to the tanks now they have a sandbag in front of them so let's see how sandbags work let me say it is there we go sandbags it says here uh, occupants may ignore the first flag so the first retreat if occupant leaves, remove the sandbags, and it's a minus one, a minus one. So the tanks, when we look at them, tanks are three, three, three. So normally I would get three dice, but I only get two now because they're behind sandbags. So I would roll these. Two infantry hits would do absolutely nothing. Uh, so that was that was brilliant. Now the way artillery works. We got it. We can look over here, and artillery works as three, three, two, two, one, one. Which I'll talk about that in my final thoughts. So it works the exact same way. Three, three, two, two. So I'm going to be getting two dice, and as it says, it ignores line of sight and terrain protections. So he just gets his two dice. So we're going to roll these. We got a tank kill and an infantry kill. They're not infantry, so it does nothing, but we do take out one of the tanks. Now, if at any time you accomplish whatever scenario you're playing, you accomplish uh, whatever the mission is, you will get a medal, one of these. And you will put it, let me back this out a little bit, you'll put it down here to show that, haha, I've got a medal, or you use these and just put a medal there. But you got a medal. Or if you completely kill a unit, you also get a medal for that unit. And the game is going to progress like that uh, back and forth because you know after you play you're going to draw another card and your opponent's going to do the same thing. It's going to back to you, you're going to play one of these, draw back up, opponent's going to do the same thing. You're going to go back and forth like this. You're going to keep going until one person accomplishes whatever the task is and gets the total number of medals. It's fairly basic. These cards make the game a lot easier to learn because you know oceans do special things beaches you got towns you got forests 
hedge groves and so it's it's pretty neat uh, sometimes you'll get special units like I don't remember exactly who these are but you have different special units you have uh, like here you have SS troops and you have army rangers that get to do special things so like if you look over here on this side you have special units and you know French resistance they can move into any terrain and still battle move one and three hexes back when retreating and starts with three figures per unit so they're a little weaker but they have a lot more mobility and so on and so forth but that's basically memoir 44 I guess let's just go straight to my final thoughts alright memoir 44 well when I was first getting into collecting board games uh, I heard a lot about memoir 44 and I always wanted to get it but it was always pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and about six months ago give or take shortly before Christmas, um, I decided, you know what, what the hell, let's go ahead and get it. I found a pretty decent price for it on eBay, and I wound up just deciding to cave and get it. I got it, and I played it, and I was like, mm, I don't like this game that much. So I played it again, I was like, okay, I'll generally, my rule is I'll play a game three times. I'll probably bitch and complain the whole time, but I will play a game three times before I decide to screw this game. So I played it again, because I really wanted to like Memoir 44. I still hated it, and I'll touch, why, touch on why in a second, but I played it again and again, and I played the game a total of maybe ten times. Seven of my games I've lost, and I'll explain why. What's going to happen a lot of the time in Memoir 44 is because you have to set up specifically how the scenario tells you to, uh, a lot of the time your units will be heavy on one side or the other. So you'll be playing, and you'll be excited to play, and you're like, mm, I, I, you form a strategies in your head and you're going to look at your little tactics cards and you're going to realize that all of your units are on the left flank but you don't have a single left flank card. You have all middle flanks and right flanks. Alright. You will you'll you have a couple units scattered around, you'll kind of move them and, and hope that you get a left flank. Four, five, six, seven turns in, you haven't drawn a single left flank. Whereas your opponent keeps drawing right flank cards because your left flank is their right flank and they are killing every single piece where the bulk of your units are they are destroying all of them and there isn't a damn thing you can do about it and your men are literally standing there dying you don't get a return fire you don't get shit they're just dying that happened my first several games and then i managed to win one because i didn't get completely screwed and then I lost several more, and then I won another one, and then I won another one, and I was like, oh, okay, and then I played again, and still lost horribly. And I guess some people might be into that, and I went on to Board Game Geek to see if anybody else maybe had this problem. Maybe I'm just terribly unlucky, and people, and a lot of the people were like, oh, well, that emulates wars. That's how wars fought. Orders get broken down, and yada, yada, yada. And let me tell you something. I was in the military. That's not how wars work. If you come under fire... You fire back. Like, a house rule to be able to maybe return fire might fix it. Or whatever. But the fact that you're... I've, I've, second or third game I played, I had a whole tank column, like three or four squads of tanks so with uh, two or three units of infantry support on my left flank. I drew one left flank the whole game. My wife proceeded to march three units up, three infantry and two or three, I don't remember, infantry units up, and destroy every single tank division that I had. And it was infuriating, because there's nothing you can do about it at all. And there's a few house rules that you can employ, uh, that you can employ where you can maybe discard a card and activate any unit on the field. That would work. Or maybe if you play with a house rule that at the end of your turn you can cycle, say, two or three of your crappy cards that you don't need. Because why do I keep drawing right blank cards when I have nothing on my right flank? And it's just, it's infuriating. I really wanted to like Memoir 44. I don't have a lot of modern or World War II themed games. I have a lot of futuristic games and zombie games and Warhammer games. and so I don't have a lot of modern and or World War II themed games. But, I digress. I hate Memoir 44. One gripe that's 
more personal to me than it probably should be is the way artillery works. And I mentioned I'd touch on this. The way artillery works is the closer the thing is to you, the more damage you're going to do. Now, I was in the military, and I was a 13 Delta, which is fire direction control for artillery. Um, I'm not going to get into how that work, how it all works, but basically I did the technical sh the technical stuff to get rounds to actually go where they're supposed to go in the artillery. Like you calculate earth rotation and air density and whole nine yards. You have very little time to do it, and it's a lot of charts and a lot of computers, a lot of screaming into radios. Very stressful job, but I got to blow things up for a living. And then you scream coordinates to the to the uh, Paladin tanks because we were mechanized, and then they get rain rounds that go downrange. That's the way artillery works. The problem with artillery is the closer something is to it, the more at risk that artillery is because artillery can't engage something that's close. That's its problem. The further away it is, the more effective it is, To, of course, to an extent. It has a maximum range. But the fact that the further away it gets, the less good that it is is just completely opposite like if and we've tried swapping that but the rest of the game is kind of built around it working the way it does so it just one of those things that really bothered the hell out of me um but i guess what are you gonna do that's part of the game but artillery doesn't work that way <laughs> artillery is more effective at long range the closer it is the worse it is like if somebody engages a goose egg for artillery it relies on the people in that goose egg to actually defend it, and they probably aren't depending. But that's how bad it is. But anyways, Memoir 44, I can't recommend it. If you like the Command and Color system, which is a game, and this is a game I'm going to wind up doing a review on, Battle Lore. I, after playing Memoir 44, and I hated it, and I gave it 10 shots, and I still to this day want to like it. I'm selling it to a friend of mine, so that way I can go, you know what, I want to give it a shot again. I want to love that game, but Battle Lore fixes every problem that I have with Memoir 44. It actually has, its actual rule is you can discard a card during your turn just to give an order to any one unit. It has a counterattack system. Um, it has a mission system where you select your personal mission, your opponent selects their personal mission, you reveal, and then you create the map together. You deploy your units out, and then reveal and put all your units out. So you can spread your... Pardon me. You can spread your units out. You can put them where you need them. It does everything Memoir 44 does just better. It's a fantasy theme, but it still does it better. Um, so if you want, if you like Memoir 44, but you don't like the fact that you're going to have to use a bunch of house rules to make it good, or you just want a better game, get Battle Lore. It's a better game. Anyways, uh, that is my review for Memoir 44. Hope you liked it. Anyways, that's the review for Memoir 44. If you like the channel, check me out on Patreon, and I will see you guys next time in the quarantine.